CTV News at 6 with Hudson Mack. Good evening. Thank you for being here. It happens April Fool's Day 2013, but it'll be no joke for BC Ferries passengers. That's the day they begin to pay more and get less. The ferry commissioner has approved fare increases, which will total compounded more than 12% over the next three years. It all begins next April. But the commissioner says ferry passengers should not have to carry the entire load alone. So he's ordered BC Ferries to find more than $54 million in savings. As CTV Stephen Andrew reports tonight, much of that will come from service cuts. BC Ferries is looking to find money to stay afloat. Today, BC Ferry Commissioner Gorb McAtee is throwing the company a lifeline, giving it permission to raise fares on all routes by more than 12% over three years. The fare hike will be phased in beginning April 1st next year, with similar increases following in 2014 and 2015. The Ferry Commissioner is also ordering BC Ferries to shave $54 million off its bottom line over the next four years with service cuts and other efficiencies. And the company has 30 days to report back on ways to save money on fuel, seeking out new fuel sources such as liquefied natural gas or LNG. We're certainly looking at LNG for new builds. Uh, you know, when you're looking at a 50 or 60 percent cheaper fuel costs, that's uh, certainly the way to go. Right now we spend about $121 million on fuel, so if we can reduce that, uh, it'll have a great impact on our bottom line. But implementing new fuel sources will take time and money. BC Ferries estimates it will cost as much as $10 million to refit each vessel. Meantime, operating costs will be fueled by more money being deposited in the fare box. That means a return trip, a car driver and one passenger from Vancouver Island to the Lower Mainland that costs $168 today in three years' time will run you $181. Ridership on BC Ferries is at an all-time low, and the NDP believe the fare increases announced today will only make things worse. I think it will create hardship for ferry-dependent communities, and I think we're going to see further resistance by riders and by tourism. So I think it's a huge mistake uh, the way this company has been run, and the BC Liberals um, have shown that this is one more chaotic example of mismanagement. The head of BC Ferries has said he's open to almost any changes that would improve efficiency and the bottom line, and that he's determined to chart a new course for the travel transportation company. His plan may be working. In the first quarter of this year, the company turned a $4 million profit. Stephen Andrew joins us now with more. Stephen, we keep hearing more about service cuts. Some of them we know about already, uh, the late night, the weekend service to Duke Point and elsewhere. What's the ferry commissioner saying about that? Well, I mean, the cuts are going to have to be determined after public uh, consultation. Hudson, that process is being led by the government, but BC Ferries is often complained that there is often more crew on ships rather than uh, passengers. And, and sometimes that, that really is the case, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, now, you talked in your report about other fuel sources. What about new ferries and, and upgrades to terminals? Well, the Ferry Commission has set a threshold of $30 million for ships and terminals and $5 million on technology. That means anything over that amount needs his approval. And BC Ferries are also Hudson has got to have to submit a rolling five-year plan for capital upgrades, uh, which he'll be reviewing every year. All right, Stephen Andrew reporting. Stephen, thanks. You're welcome.